Today, I talk about rewriting your memories, executing a sound plan, and how to deal with annoying people in group discussions. Welcome to Mind Games TV, episode 47. So I'm entering the big hair phase of my growth out to hair that comes down to the middle of my back. We'll see if I actually survive all that way without a haircut. Last time it took me about a year or so. But um, updates, updates, updates. Nothing I really want to talk about today. We've had crazy news about roster changes um, in League of Legends. We've had a fantastic... Counter-Strike Global Offensive major um, in, I think it was in Poland, actually. I should probably check on that before I say something. Maybe it was Romania. Sorry, guys. Uh, in, like, Central Europe, I am not so brushed up on my geography. And not much else has been happening. I have this new, awesome, shared office to work in for the company. So I'll be filming a lot of Mind Games TV here. And uh, I'll be on a podcast tonight, so look for that as well. All right, let's get into the questions. Simon asks, how do I deal with a person who likes to trail off in group discussions? Simon, this is a good question because it, it has a lot of different answers. So I could go in, a, in, in pretty, pretty opposite directions with this uh, issue. But I think that probably the safest thing to do is decide whether or not this is an essential confrontation or not. So you have a person who's trailing off in the group discussion. Is it, I mean, is it just like everybody's impatient or is it actually harming the group? Um, is the person going to learn from the confrontation that you do or is the confrontation useless and likely to just cause strife? So if the answer is that it's pulling the group off topic in, in a way that's actually detrimental rather than just annoying, and if the person's going to learn from the confrontation, then you confront them in, with the group. And uh, it's, it's a confrontation that is not based on you and your ego, but rather the, you know, in, a, in an effort to help them. So kind of like a group intervention. Uh, and if you can structure it in a way that, that, is, that is enabling of the group to give feedback to this person. And it will be hard, but they'll get through it and then they'll be better. Okay, the second way that you can handle it is individually. And that also involves a confrontation, but it's not in front of a group. So you take out that whole dynamic of whether or not this is going to be you know difficult for the person to deal with. Now it's just a one-on-one -on -one thing. And you might come away with this thinking, okay that person didn't change, they just accused me of being a dick, and now they don't like me. But in reality, even if the confrontation like doesn't solve the problem or doesn't go well, you've planted the seed in there for behavior change, and it might come later on in the future. That's my short answer for that long and, and convoluted, convoluted question. You might also try to kind of uh, dig into and examine and understand why that person is trailing off. They might have a reason that is related to like a personal need or a personal uh, kind of trait uh, or a way that they just operate in groups. And you could just seek to change that by reinforcing or supporting or positively empowering them in, in ways that satisfy that need so they don't, they don't use it as a coping mechanism or as a way to kind of feel psychologically sound. Anonymous asks, what are the neurological benefits to working out? Okay, thank you, Mr. Anonymous or Miss Anonymous or Mrs. Uh, okay, this is getting pointless. Anyway, um, the answer is that there are an astounding number of neurological benefits to working out, so many so that I would say that it's not actually... Uh, maybe actually you get physiological benefits for working out because actually what you're doing is working in the brain and then it just so happens that you get more physically fit as well. Th this is the level at which these systems are integrated, okay? They're not independent. That's the first thing that I try to teach people is that there's no central nervous system and then body, um, that these tubes are interconnected completely. And so, I mean, we could go over some of the crazier ones like... It helps people rewrite their memories of their uh, their painful deliveries. So there's these fantastic studies that I based my master's research on that showed that women who were physically active uh, within the first uh, after the first uh, eight weeks of their delivery 
uh, leading up to four months after their delivery. Uh, no matter what sort of like delivery they had, whether it was horrible or, or wonderful, like they ended up like more successfully rewriting their memories to it being a like a, a very pleasant experience or something that was like tolerable so that they could then have children again. Whereas women who did not had do physical activity or workout like um, retained those memories and could not rewrite them. So, I mean, yeah, the brain is the body and the body is the brain. There's no, there's no like neurological benefit to working out. There's just a neurological deficit to not working out. Like, um, it's, it's absolutely critical part of how your body functions. Some of the other things that happen if you don't work out or don't, sorry, there's a difference between working out and being physically active. Okay. So you just need to be physically active. That's what you get a lot of the benefits from working out. is kind of like icing on the cake. Okay. So just move is what I'm saying. But, um, if you don't move, then your rates of cancer go up, your rates of Alzheimer's go up, your rates of Parkinson's go up, your ability, your short-term memory decays, um, your mood decays, your ability to handle stress decays, um, your mitochondria uh, shrink in size and number, your heart and vein and arteries and veins become like, you know, older. I mean, they don't work as well. Just everything, man. Joshua asks, if I am in a best of three series and the original plan failed during the game, should my team switch strategies or improve on it for game two? Okay, Joshua, this is an interesting question. And there's a lot of variables to go into it. Like how well practiced is this uh, plan that you're swapping to? How well practiced is the plan that you are, are sticking to? And what in the world did your opponents do to counter it? I mean, if they've got a handle on what you're going to do and they are going to deal with it no matter what, then, you know, my, my answer is going to change. I'm going to say switch. So this is, <laughs> this is unfortunately a question that I, I would need more information to, to answer. But I can say best practice is if you have a plan and you um, have practiced it very well, and you know it inside and out, and you can adapt it and stretch it and modify it, and um, you are really sound on it, then it doesn't really matter if the opponents have a counter or not because you can execute better than them. It comes down to execution at that point. And this is one of the reasons that under Vince Lombardi, the Green Bay Packers were able to win so many Super Bowls and go undefeated in so many streaks is because they had a very, very simple offensive strategy. One might even say pedantic but they executed it to a level and to a degree which had never before been seen in the game of American football. And it didn't matter that the defense knew it was coming because they couldn't stop it. Uh, and so that is kind of what offensive lines strive for in terms of like across warfare. Like, you know, the German blitzkrieg is coming. Uh, and uh, you know, after the second day or third day, but it doesn't even matter because there's nothing that you can do to prepare for it or counter it. And so this kind of um, like overwhelmingly well-executed and uh, uh, sound strategy that, that strikes, you know, simultaneously at, as much as possible is the kind of thing that I like to coach in, in terms of strategy games and map-based games. So if you have that kind of plan, stick with it and just focus on your execution. If you uh, have this random strategy that you're trying and it's not working, you may as well switch to another random strategy because you're just rolling the dice. Okay, that's today's show. Uh, I feel like I'm pretty out of it on this first shot. I'm shooting the first show for the day, and I've said a lot of you know things like um and mm, and I tried to get into the questions, but I didn't do a very good job maybe, so I apologize to those of you who had their questions featured today. I'll try to amp up the energy for the next show and take advantage of my this nice couch, maybe lay, a, lay back a little bit here, enjoy myself more. So yeah, I will see you tomorrow, and enjoy the rest of your day.